name is Paige. I'm 26 years old. I'm at the park today because Olivia, my European friend, called me to come. I'm here, did you wait? I mean, Olivia, what are you doing? Paige, let's bury our time capsule. Huh, time capsule? Yes, the owner of this park is my friend, so I asked for permission already. While I was cleaning your whole house to meet the new year with a clean house, I found a couple of things that reminded me of you, so I decided to bury a time capsule. Oh, is that so? Is that the time capsule you're talking about? Wow, this is so nostalgic! This uniform is what we wore at the part-time job where we first met. I remember the first time we met during college. This brings back so many memories. And uh, what is this one? That is the receipt I picked up from the ground on the day we first met at our part-time job. Uh, re receipt What did you want to do with this receipt that you picked up from the ground? Pick up the trash when you see one. I learned this from my European teacher. You won't be able to pick up chances in life if you don't pick up trash. I was able to pick up the chance of meeting you, Paige. Thanks for coming to pick up this receipt on the ground. Come to think of it, Olivia. You learned English from your European teacher, right? Yes, and I also watched tons of Hollywood movies. I will expose the real culprit in the name of Mitch. Huh? Mitch? Who is Mitch? Didn't you see the family tree? Oh, I guess you mean like family crest. Olivia still says a series of funny English words to this day. Thanks to that, she always brightens my day whenever she's around. I have such a wonderful friend, but I was unfortunate to have one very troublesome person in my life. The person I'm talking about is my younger sister Lucy. She's two years younger than me. I wasn't the only one getting troubled by Lucy. My parents don't know what to do about her too. When we were both little, Luna was an ordinary girl with nothing much to worry about. However, as she grew older, the people around her started telling her, you're so beautiful. You're so pretty. Well, I'm not denying her pretty face, but I think that's probably what distorted her personality. Both our father and mother are good people with firm personalities, so it's shocking that she turned out like this. All I could think of was that she mutated somewhere when no one was watching. The following happened when I was in high school, too. Hey, Lucy, you've been following my boyfriend around, haven't you? My boyfriend told me what you've been doing. He told me that you've been following him and you're also sending him messages to him on social media. He feels very annoyed, so please stop doing that. Huh, what a bother. I was just curious as to what kind of person your boyfriend is. So I just tried to have a bit of a nibble and chest him out. What? I can't believe this. Just like that, Lucy has become the kind of person who is not afraid to go off the rails by testing other people's boyfriends. She has victimized not only me, but other women. It seems like a lot of women in our class were victimized by her. Because of that, I apologized on her behalf every time. However, she didn't really steal their boyfriends or anything, so I thought my boyfriend was safe with her. That's what the people around me thought too. That's right, she flirts with other girls' boyfriends, but she's never stolen yet. I don't know if it's just her personality is that bad, or if it's just that she's dumb. Well, it's actually both, but it seems like Lucy has never succeeded at stealing someone's boyfriend. However, there's no way I'm going to leave her unregulated. That's what I thought, and I thought of ways to stop her from flirting with other women's boyfriends. Then one day I asked Lucy why she keeps on flirting with the guys who have girlfriends. To which she replied, because don't you think too that's the fastest way? To prove that I am better than the lowly girls is to steal their boyfriends from them? You're the worst. I bet she's enjoying the thrill and excitement of can she do this because we're confident in her beauty. I wasn't able to find a way to stop the reckless behavior of a girl whose screws in the head got loose. After I graduated from high school, I studied at a university in New York. Since I'm away from home, I started living alone. I then met Ethan, who is two years my senior. We hit it off right away and he became my boyfriend. We also talked about getting married after I graduate from university and get a job. Ethan told me that all the women he dated were all strange and weird people. He said that his first ever girlfriend had plenty of other men, so the moment he learned about it, they broke up immediately. His next girlfriend was a thief. He 
found out that his next girlfriend kept on stealing money from his wallet. They had a huge fight and they ended up breaking up. As for his last girlfriend before he started dating me, she was an alcoholic and she caused an incident at the bar. She ended up getting arrested by the police and then he broke up with her. After that, Ethan told me, I am extremely unlucky when it comes to love. I guess the reason why he chose me to be his girlfriend after dating all those weirdos is because I am a very ordinary woman. As ordinary as the word ordinary can be. Three years into our relationship, Ethan proposed to me while we were on a date. Ethan was already working full time, but I was still at university at that time. I hadn't really thought in detail about marriage yet. However, I was in love with Ethan from the bottom of my heart, and we've been together for three years, and we don't have any major issues. I thought that there was no one else in this world who gets me like he does, and who I am makes me feel safe and loved like he does. We were living together too, by the way. After a lot of careful thinking, I decided to say yes to his proposal. I then brought Ethan home to introduce to my parents as my fiancé. Lucy, who had the habit of flirting with other people's men, was also there that day sitting with us. But Lucy has never succeeded in stealing anyone's boyfriend. So I wasn't worried about her stealing Ethan from me. I even felt a bit of pity that I was getting married ahead of her. However, after a month after Ethan came to our house... I'm home! Ah, Ethan, you're home! You've been coming home late lately. It seems like you're working very hard lately. Because the wedding will cost a lot of money. But don't forget to take good care of your health too, okay? Health is wealth after all. Paige, I need to talk to you about something. Huh? Talk about something? What do you mean? Let's break up. Huh? Did I hear you right? What? I was caught off guard because he hurled those words at me out of the blue. I was frozen there for a moment, not able to comprehend the situation. Actually, the reason why I've been coming home late lately is not because of work. The truth is, I've been seeing your sister, Lucy. W what Lucy? What a second. This turn of events? Could it be? I was able to imagine the next words that would come out of Ethan's lips. Then Ethan said exactly the words I thought he would say. Actually, I... Lucy and I are having an affair. According to Ethan, the day after he came to our house, Lucy searched for Ethan on social media. She sent him a message saying, Would you like to go out for a drink? Don't tell my older sister about this. When he asked why he was not allowed to tell me, she replied, Because I want to surprise her on her wedding day. Of course, that was just a lie. But to my disbelief, the two of them ended up in the same bed that night. Lucy kept on giving me more and more alcohol to drink. And so I got drunk because I had won too many drinks. Then when I told her to pretend this never happened, she told me that if I continue seeing her, she'll pretend it never happened. What? Lucy might look a bit spoiled and selfish, but I think that part of her is cute. I guess that means that I'm so in love with her, right? <laughs> Ethan was grinning probably because he was thinking about Lucy. All the blood drained out of my face and I went pale. I felt very irritated and enraged by both of them. The love I had for him was gone, forever. He told me that he is extremely unlucky when he comes to love, but isn't that just because his eyes are rotten? Hasn't he thought at all that he was the reason why he was extremely unlucky when it comes to love? He's too dumb. He's too short-sighted. I'm glad I found this out before we got married. I had nothing else to say to him, so I just said, All right, I understand. Goodbye. I then packed up all my things and went back to my parents' house. When I arrived home, I immediately told my parents everything that happened. I asked them to kick Lucy out of the house, too. I, of course, cut ties with Lucy. Our parents did the same, too. However, as for Lucy, she probably felt high because she was finally able to succeed in stealing someone's boyfriend. Lucy didn't care about cutting ties with her family. She looked at me and said, How does it feel getting your boyfriend stolen by me? <laughs> I'm such a very attractive woman, so troublesome. Now that you're not living with Ethan anymore, I should probably go live there from now on. Okay now, toodles. I will live a very happy life with him. Not long after that, I graduated from university and got a job. However, even though I'm not in love with Ethan anymore, I was extremely shocked that my younger sister and my boyfriend at the time had betrayed me. I became haggard and worn out, but my parents and Olivia took care of me. I am truly thankful to all three of them. 
Then after a few months had passed, an invitation to Lucy and Ethan's wedding arrived at our house. Of course we didn't care to answer the invitation and I even tore the invitation to pieces and threw it in the trash. However, one Sunday afternoon, I received a call from an unknown caller. My heart was pounding, but I answered the call. Then I heard a familiar voice. Hello? Ah, big sister. Cool, it's Lucy. While I sat there frozen because of the unexpected call, Lucy continued to bombard me with information. Big sis, you blocked my number, but I bought a new phone and changed my phone number. <laughs> you know, today's my wedding day and I'm getting married to Ethan, right? Hmm? I sent an invitation to you, you know. Why aren't you here when I invited you to come? At least show up to the after party. Ethan said that he wants to thank you because you brought him to me, his soulmate, the love of his life. What in the world are they thinking? Have they given nuts? Is she seriously asking me why I'm not attending her wedding ceremony? Does she really think that our parents and I will accept her invitation? Why would she even think that in the first place? Ethan wants to thank me? Ethan is also a piece of junk. He's probably feeling high because he's getting married, or maybe he thinks that I'm not angry anymore for what he's done, just because time has passed? Is that why he's inviting me to the after party? Huh, <laughs> this is the worst. Could this get any worse? As for Lucy, she probably wants to shove in my face. However, she's very happy with the man she stole away from me. She's gotta be kidding me. Now they've got my blood boiling. I will be relentless. I will show those morons what I'm capable of doing by showing them how happy I really am in my daily life. Deep inside my heart, I was thirsty for revenge. Lucy then continued to talk in a shrill and annoying voice. I sent you the number and address for the after party, so I'll expect to see you there, okay? <laughs> Ethan, touching me too much. <laughs> I L O B E you too. Keys. All right, understood. I got the details of the after party. Mm, well, then I'll take my husband with me too, okay? Huh? Your husband? I'm so excited already. My husband and I had plans on eating out tonight. I guess the timing is just right. We'll be there tonight. Huh? W wait, just a second. You have a husband? I didn't know you were married. That is when I hung up the phone. I then went that night together with my husband to Lucy and Ethan's wedding after party. W what Hey! The moment my husband and I walked into the room, Lucy immediately saw my husband and became speechless. <laughs> Let me introduce my husband to you. This is Lucas, my beloved husband. W what so handsome, a uh, foreigner? Yes, that's right. My husband Lucas is a European. My friend Olivia introduced him to me. He is dark and tall and handsome. All the women in the room couldn't get their eyes off Lucas. My husband works for a major company. I am truly happy right now. A man of high caliber. Oh, are you Paige's younger sister? I've heard a lot about you. I've been wanting to meet you. However, your perfume is too strong. <coughs> Where's the window? I can't find the window! The strong smell of perfume is so strong that I might lose my nose. It's too pungent. I feel like removing my nose and washing it immediately with clean soap and water. Hey! <laughs> As for the groom over there, wow, you're Paige's ex-boyfriend who got stolen by Lucy, right? You look very dumb. Why did you choose to marry that smelly woman? Ooh la la! Your brain must have a hole, because it looks like you're spilling bits of your brain while walking! <laughs> hey, stop making fun of me! Enough! Lucas is a sharp tongue as always. I love that about him too. Also, many people laughed at what Lucas said. So I'm sure that some didn't really want to join the after party, but they felt forced to do so. Well, Lucy has always had a bad attitude since we were in school, so I wouldn't be surprised at all. Hey, how could you ruin my wedding after party? Uh, but you're the one who invited us to come, remember? I just came here because you told me to come. Get out of here now! I won't forgive you for this. I will definitely ruin your marriage just like how you ruined my party. Lucy's face became red and she stomped her feet. Seeing that, Lucas and I looked at each other and laughed. The next day, the intercom at my place rang, so I checked the screen to see who it was. What I saw was a shocking sight. 
It was Lucy standing there in ragged clothing. Big sister, forgive me. I lived with my Ethan and my parents-in-law at their house, but they kicked me out of the house and I don't have any place to stay. Actually, this girl, after the wedding after party, she really tried to ruin my happy life with Lucas. She followed Lucas around and even sent messages to Lucas again and again. Lucas blocked her, but she kept on creating new accounts, so we reported her to the police. Lucy received warnings from the police again and again, but she never stopped inconveniencing us. So she was nearly arrested because of that. The whole neighborhood learned about that. My parents-in-law told me they don't want a daughter-in-law who nearly got arrested by the police. So Ethan and I got divorced. Mom and Dad told me they don't have any plans to help me because they already cut ties with me, so they won't allow me to go home. That's why I'm sleeping in the park right now. It's freezing cold and I'm starving. I beg you, I'll apologize for everything I did, so please. Uh, actually, Lucas and I were the ones who reported her to the police. I guess she really needs dire help because she came to beg for our help. I'm sure someone like her won't be able to join the workforce, so I didn't respond to her, but instead I reported her again to the police. I could hear her from the other side of the door screaming. No! I don't want this! Let go of me, big sister! <laughs> but in less than a second, it became quiet like nothing happened. After that, Lucy was finally arrested and she was slammed into a prison cell. Lucy continued to show insane behavior even inside the prison, so she's currently living a life of being scolded every day. One day I became curious as to how she was doing, so I visited her in the prison. Her sight shocked me. She looked like an old woman, with wrinkles on her skin and gray hair. The only good part of Lucy was her looks, but now she doesn't even have that anymore. I only looked at her for a second, laughed at her, then went home. Haha. <laughs> As for Ethan, I heard from his friend that after he and Lucy got divorced, he was heartbroken, but he met someone. That woman became his girlfriend, but that woman apparently had a debt of close to $100,000 and he ended up becoming a co-signer of that debt. I heard that he's currently living a life of burden because of that debt. Serves him right. As for my life, I'm currently living a happy life with my husband Lucas, supporting him as a housewife. And exciting news, I'm currently pregnant. We are very excited to meet the baby inside my belly. And oh, by the way, Olivia came to our house the other day and... Paige, hello, how are you doing? How's the baby in your belly? Hello, Olivia, I'm doing great. Children grow up watching their parents' backs. What are you doing? Showing your pressure points. Huh? Uh, Olivia, what are you talking about? It's one of my favorite lines that my blonde teacher taught me. Paige, you won't show your pressure points, but that's how I know for certain that you will become a good mother. <laughs> you haven't changed at all, Olivia. I like how you say things I don't understand sometimes, but thank you, Olivia. After I give birth to my firstborn, I will hug you too, okay? <laughs> my name is Paige. I'm 27 years old. Timothy and I got married three years ago. He is two years older than me. I started living with my parents-in-law because of their strong request. I wasn't too keen on the idea, but Timothy is likely to get relocated in the future. So I reluctantly agreed to live together with his parents until his job relocation. I thought that it would be a waste of money to pay the security deposit for a real estate agency if he won't stay at the apartment for too long. But I never would have expected that he won't get relocated for three years. Since my workplace was far from my parent-in-law's house, I resigned from the company on marriage. That's when I started working from home. Something that I've been intrigued with for quite a while now. It seems like this type of work wherein I can use my time however I want and work at my own pace is compatible with my nature. That's why my work has been steadily increasing. However, my mother-in-law doesn't understand how working from home works. No matter how much I try to explain to her, she thinks that I'm only playing games online whenever I do work using my computer. Hey Paige, you're playing games with your computer again? If you have time to play, why don't you clean the house? Oh, there she goes again. Um, I've explained to you a thousand times already. I'm not playing any games, I'm working properly. Hmm, you're always making excuses, aren't you? Are you telling me that your work is to play any time you want to? That's insulting to both Timothy and my husband. Huh? 
What's insulting? To work is to wear suits, get on the train, and go to the office. How could you treat it like playing games? Oh, she's hopeless. She'll never understand. It seems like my mother-in-law's mind is stuck in the past. No matter how much I try to explain to her, she doesn't understand me at all. On that note, my husband and father-in-law understand it, and they even root for me. Work from home. Amazing. That's a very modern way of doing work. I'm not very modern, so I go to the office every day. But as the world changes, so do the working styles. I think you're very advanced for being able to keep up with modernization. I'm not that advanced. <laughs> you started working from home because I told you that my job requires a lot of relocations, right? That's my page. You foresee the future. Just like that, Timothy and my father-in-law rooted for me, so I was somehow able to continue working from home. But new problems have arisen lately. Timothy's house is quite old, having been built 40 years ago, so it's quite in shambles and might fall apart. It's not possible to continue living here for a long time, so we discussed about renovating it. We thought about moving and reorganizing it in the meantime, but it would require a lot of work to organize all the stuff that my parents-in-law have accumulated throughout decades of living here. So we ended up living here while the house was being renovated. Of course, while the house was being renovated, there were rooms that we couldn't use for the time being, and the room that I've been using for work became a storage space for the things from set rooms. So I have no choice but to work in the living room, but my mother-in-law still thinks that I'm just playing, so she talks to me even during times when I'm in the middle of a meeting. Paige, stop playing games with your computer. You should be preparing dinner soon. Oh my God, have mercy on me. I don't deserve to be treated like this. I told her now to talk to me during this specific time because I'll be joining a meeting. I was thinking of ways to make her understand the situation, but... Hey, I'm talking to you. Answer my question. My mother-in-law said that and came closer. She then peeked into the computer screen. Mother-in-law, please stop doing that. What? Are you guys as Paige's friends online? My mother-in-law peeked into the computer screen and she stared at the people on the computer screen. You guys should stop playing online too. You're full grown adults for goodness sake. My mother-in-law pointed at the people at the screen and she said those words with a satisfied look. Oh my God, my goodness. I'm screwed. My face turned right out of embarrassment. I apologized to everyone after my mother-in-law left the room, but this incident became a laughing stock for business partners. Since then, every time I joined an online meeting, they remember that incident and I became a laughing stock. Oh, this is so embarrassing. However, my mother-in-law wasn't the only one who was illiterate with computers. A few weeks later, Timothy has a younger sister named Ariana. They have a huge age gap. Ariana is a 23-year-old housewife and she lives with her husband in the neighboring city after she and her husband got married. Maybe it's because she was born after their parents were quite the age, but she is quite spoiled by them, so she does whatever she wants. I heard that she works part-time, but she comes to visit her parents quite a lot. Paige, what are you doing? I envy housewives. You can do whatever you want all day long, like playing games on your computer and stuff. Huh? What is she saying? Uh, no, I'm not playing with my computer. Actually, I'm working from home, you know. She's from this generation, so I'm sure she understands what working from home means. That's what I thought, but... You don't have to keep on telling that lie. Remote jobs are only possible for skilled and talented elite people, right? Paige, you're just trying to sound cool by saying that you're working from home, right? Huh? I'm not trying to sound cool at all. Uh, no. In this day and age, it's not restricted to elite people, you know? Ariana doesn't seem to be convinced even if I explain it to her. Oh my, you don't have to pretend like you're working. It's impossible for ordinary people like you to work from home. You're just playing online games, right? Just like that, she doesn't understand me at all. Like mother, like daughter? My mother-in-law and sister-in-law keep on disturbing me when I'm working from home. So I asked Timothy and my father-in-law to talk to them, but... My mother-in-law and sister-in-law just grin broadly and say yes mockingly. 
However, about three days passed, they started disturbing me again. What in the world is happening inside their brains? I tried different methods like avoiding the times when both of them are around, and I also tried working outside at cafes and office spaces. I got more and more stressed out the more I couldn't work freely as I wanted. Then at last, an incident happened on the day I was preparing for work, when something caught my eye. It was a wretched appearance of my computer in pieces! What? Why is my computer broken? I'm pretty sure I put it in its proper place after work like I always do. I stood there dumbfounded for about a minute or so. Then Ariana called me and walked into the room. Oh my, you found out! <laughs> Ariana laughed at me like there was something funny. Found out? What do you mean by that? Oh, I thought of playing games online last night, so I borrowed your computer. Huh? I don't remember permitting you to use my computer. But it demanded me to type the password and a locked screen appeared and I couldn't open it. It said something like password incorrect and stuff, so... Of course it's password protected. It contains work-related stuff, so the security is tight. And so, what did you do? I suppressed my anger and asked her. Um, I typed this and that, but then my hand slipped and... Huh? There's no way it would break like this! If all it did was fall from the table. And then, what did you do after your hand slipped? That computer doesn't listen to me at all! I was so irritated by it, so I cracked it in half! How dare you put a lock on it when you're just using it for playing games! You're so selfish for not sharing it with me! I want to play games online too! Password incorrect? Ugh, so annoying! What? Why is she the one angry when she's the one who broke my stuff? Then my mother-in-law heard the ruckus, so she walked into the living room. What is that, Paige? You locked your computer for security? What do you need security for? Oh, you're guilty of hiding something, aren't you? That's why you locked your computer. You're doing something that you don't want anyone to know about, right? Don't tell me you're cheating on your husband. That's what you're doing, aren't you? Paige, tell us the truth. Ah, what in the world is wrong with these people? The computer is mine. Why are you acting like the victim when you're the one who broke my computer? Of course, I don't want other people to see the contents of my computer. It is filled with information from my clients that I shouldn't be sharing with anyone. I need to lock my computer to secure the data. I'm not cheating on my husband at all. <sighs> You're unbelievable. The two of you, get out of here. Not able to hold it in much longer, I ended up shouting my thoughts out loud. However, Ariana and my mother-in-law refused to listen to a word I said. What work? Stop acting all high and mighty when all you do is play games online. Don't lose your temper just because you can't play online using your computer anymore. That's right. Since you're always playing games with your computer, I broke it so that you'll be more serious about life. For your sake, I broke your computer with all my heart. Ugh! What in the world is this woman saying? Does she even hear what she's saying? That's right. Ariana did it for you, you know. By the way, you're the one who should leave. Because this is my house. <laughs> you keep saying that you're busy working and you don't even help with the chores at home. You're an eyesore. I can't believe Timothy got brainwashed by you. Both of you are not very nice. That's right, that's right. This is our house, so you're the one that needs to leave. Oh no, this is not good. If I stay with these people, I'm going to lose myself. With that in mind, I just glared at them and I ran out of the room without saying a thing. Oh, she's exaggerating. Her toy just got broken, what's the fuss? Yeah, she's so childish. I heard them bad-mouthing me behind my back. They don't feel remorse at all. Huh, <laughs> I will never forgive them. I had the data backed up, so they were safe. I then used my old laptop and continued working, but I became even more angry towards Ariana, because she didn't show any signs of apologizing to me. That night, I reported what happened today to Timothy. She might be my younger sister, but I can't forgive what she did to you. She doesn't even try to understand, no matter how much you try to explain it to her. I fed up with them, even though they were my family. I'm sorry, Paige. Maybe we shouldn't have agreed to live with them. I don't want to see their faces ever again! Let's get out of this house! I nodded to Timothy's decision. 
just as I initially thought. It's very difficult to live with people who don't understand my job. And I did think that I should just be patient for a short while, but I've had enough of them. I can't take this much longer. You're right. I guess it would be better for us to live separately from your parents. However, if we back down like they want to, we'll just be right where they want us to be. I can't put my mind at ease if they don't feel remorse for kicking us out. When I told Timothy that, he replied, You're right. Those blockheads need to understand. That's where I made a certain suggestion. You're right! How about we do it like this? Wow! Great idea! That's my page! <laughs> so just like that, we decided to get back at them. The next day, I talked to Ariana and my mother-in-law who just woke up from their sleep. About what happened yesterday. I understand. I will leave. Hearing my words, both of them said hooray. Hehe, <laughs> that's right. Be happy while you still can. We're leaving for a vacation today, so pack up your things before we arrive home. Understood? Oh, I can't believe how mean-spirited they are. They even demanded we move out in three days. But despite that, I responded with a smile on my face. Yes, understood. Okay then, good luck. This stupid mother and daughter. It's too late for them to apologize now. <laughs> Three days later. Ariana and my mother-in-law arrived home from their trip, and they went straight to my apartment after that. <laughs> I can't contain my laughter because they came here as expected. Oh, mother-in-law, welcome home. The two of them were pale and shaking when I opened the door. Um, Paige, what is happening? Our house is empty, there's nothing inside. All the furniture, including those we bought last time, like the sofa and drawers, are gone. All those pieces of furniture? Timothy and I brought them to our new apartment. Huh? What? But why? Why? Because I bought all of those pieces of furniture and appliances with my own money. It's just so right that I bring them with me, right? Uh, and also, none of the renovating contractors are on site. The construction is not progressing. What in the world is happening? But that's right! Also, a sheet is being used to cover the huge hole in the wall! Why? The construction workers tore down the wall during renovation, and they will be adding from there. Oh, about that. I was actually the one paying for the renovation of the house. But I don't live there anymore, so I asked them to stop the renovation work. Actually, when the renovation of the house was decided, my father-in-law discussed the matter with Timothy and me. My father-in-law was already in his 60s, and he was about to retire, so he told us that it would be financially challenging to pay the mortgage. So we decided that Timothy and I would take out a loan with our names. We concluded that Timothy and I would use that house however we wanted in the future. My father-in-law made a down payment, and we decided that we would all live together in that house, just like how things were. I'm sure my father-in-law explained the situation to my mother-in-law, but she probably forgot or maybe not even listened at all. B -b 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 but my husband paid the down payment and Timothy's going to pay for the loan, right? Renovation of the bathroom and the kitchen are done, right? It costs about the same as the down payment and, oh, by the way, Timothy is not the one who paid for the loan, but me. It was easier for me to pass the screening since I earn more the houses under my name. What? You're just joking, right? Why do you earn more than Timothy when all you do is play games all day? Th that's right! How could you earn more than him when you're just a housewife? I told them I'm properly working from home. Oh, yeah, yeah. I told you a lot of times already that I'm properly working from home. You're the ones who chose not to believe me when I told you. You even broke my purpose tool for the trade. By the way, Timothy and I have been paying $2,000 every month for rent and living expenses, but all of that money was also from my savings. W what? Everything? You mean you, Paige? Yes, that's right. Timothy said he'd pay half of it, but he still has to pay his student loans, and fortunately, I'm working on a huge project and I have a stable income coming in. That is why I suggested to Timothy that he uses his money to pay his student loans, so he can pay it off faster. Since we already moved out of the house, I won't be paying $2,000 every month from now on. What? Uh, I, uh, we haven't paid for our trip yet. I know. Mother-in-law, you use the money I paid to you every month for your pleasure like shopping at luxury shops and on trips. 
You were living such an extravagant lifestyle, weren't you? Also, the house is under my name, so if you ever want to live there despite it not being fully renovated, you'll have to pay rent to me. What? Hey, hey, wait! Rent, what are you talking about? It seems like I won't be using it anytime soon, so I think I'll tear down the house and clear the land. Maybe I'll even turn it into a parking lot. That way I'll be able to earn from it. Mom, are, are you alright? Of course I'm not! You monster, stop messing with me! Oh my, now she's angry when I should be the one angry. That's when my father-in-law and Timothy showed up. Timothy and I told his father about the situation. He was so appalled by the behavior of his daughter and wife, so he agreed to our plan. Go to hold on yourselves! What are you complaining about when you were rude to Paige and treated her badly? My mother-in-law and Ariana became downhearted because of the force of my father-in-law's words. I will never forgive you for what you've done to Paige! I don't want to see your faces ever again! Just like that, my father-in-law dragged them home. <laughs> they got what they deserved. After that, my father-in-law and mother-in-law got divorced. Apparently, my father-in-law was fed up with my mother-in-law's spending habits buying luxury brands and of how she kept talking bad behind other people's backs. My mother-in-law was complaining about the alimony, but the lawyer said that given her spending habits, it's just right to charge her alimony. She was kicked out of the house because of that. I heard she now lives in a shabby apartment, and I heard that she's working part-time now. As for Ariana, her husband found out that she went to her parents' home a lot. He thought that it was suspicious, so he hired the detective to find out the truth. To his surprise, Ariana was having an affair! He divorced her immediately and demanded alimony from her. I heard that she went to her father crying, but he cut ties with her too. He told her that he didn't want to call such a careless woman his daughter. It seems like Ariana went to her mother's apartment, but actually, the other day, the bill collector saw the two of them go inside the casino together and caught them. I saw them crying for help. They're probably addicted to gambling, even though they have a huge debt. Well, it would be impossible for them to live a decent life from now on. Karma got them where they should. After that, my father-in-law's house reservation was continued. It looks like my father-in-law is enjoying his single life. Paige! I'm finally getting relocated for my job! What? Really? Where? Is it far or is it near here? Actually, it's Tokyo! What? Really? Absolutely! You're, of course, coming with me, right? Of course! It was the right decision to work from home! <laughs> my name is Paige. I'm a 28-year-old and I'm a temporary employee. The company called Panico that I'm temporarily working at is a small company with about 20 employees. But everybody is amazingly passionate about their job. And that's why I don't want to lose their passion and I have been working very hard here. Today, I have arrived for a meeting at Sugoiko, which is a major company. This Sugoiko is a company that grew exponentially in the last few years. Panico has been working with Sugoiko since long before they became well known. Apparently, they've been business for almost 30 years now, and the CEO of our company was childhood friends with the first generation CEO of Sugoiko. A few years ago, that CEO passed away, and even though the CEO has changed, the relationship between the two companies has continued. I was placed in charge of Sugoiko, so I have already been to their office a number of times. If it's just a contract, then there are other times it can be completed over email. But when we need to explain new products, I make sure to go there physically myself. I was led into the meeting room and I was waiting for the person in charge of our company, Mr. Harrison, to arrive. This time somebody I had never seen before came along with him into the room. Miss Page, thank you for coming all this way to meet with us again. Um, I know this is very sudden, but I'm actually going to be transferred soon. And because the person in charge is going to be changing today, I would like to do the handover, but would that be okay? What? Mr. Harrison, you're being transferred? This Mr. Harrison was a very kind person and he was always very considerate of our situation. When setting deadlines, he was a very reliable person, so this is way too disappointing. I'll be the person in charge from now on. Said this guy named Williams, who handed his business card over with one hand. Hmm, is this his first job? 
I was a little bit confused by how he casually handed over the business card. So I handed him mine as well, but... What? You're just a temp? What the hell? Why would they send over a temp for such an important meeting? What? I was shocked at his sudden words, and I tried not to let it bother me and I began the meeting. But then, just as I opened my laptop and I tried to inform him that the product had been improved, Williams was on his phone and grinning. Hey, Mr. Williams, you need to listen to the explanation. Huh? It's just that the subcontractor's product changed a little bit. That could have been settled in an email. This is ridiculous. From now on, there's no value in listening to the subcontractor, much less a temporary employee. What? Hey, this guy, is it just me or is he saying something really outrageous right now? If you say it like that, that's rude. Excuse me? Even though I'm a more competent employee than you? Are you sure you should be saying that? If you're inefficient like you, Mr. Harrison, and you're always matching the subcontractor, there's no way you can do good work. <laughs> anyway, I'm bored of whatever you're saying. So that's at the end. So you can leave. Here's the order sheet. Miss Williams arrogantly threw the paperwork at me. H hey! You're the subcontractor. And subcompetent. Stop running your mouth. I'm telling you that we'll still keep our contract with you, so you should be grateful. What do you mean, grateful? Listen, you... Wait, huh? Well, wait a minute. The deadline and numbers on this are all over the place. You can't accept this. Huh? I told you this meeting is over, didn't I? If you don't hurry up and go back and work, you're not going to make it for the deadline. Uh, who does this guy think he is? I had no choice but to tell him I would speak to my boss about it. And I left the meeting room. Mr. Harrison walked me all the way to the exit of the company, and he looked ashamed as he apologized for Mr. Williams' attitude. When I asked him about it, apparently, Williams sucks up to his bosses. But when it comes to anybody he thinks is beneath him, his attitude is horrendous. Apparently, Mr. Harrison has scolded Williams about his attitude many times, but he doesn't seem interested in those words at all. Williams has always been good at getting on the good side of his bosses, and he spread false bad information about Mr. Harrison or sabotaged his work, and that's how he stole his position. Looks like we've discovered the quite the good-for-nothing guy. I might just nominate him for the most good-for-nothing guy we've come across this year. When I got back to the company, I immediately went to the CEO and informed him of everything that happened, and then he immediately went to pick up the phone and called Sugoiko to change the person in charge and to adjust the deadline and the numbers on the contract. Williams's manager could only keep apologizing, and it was decided that tomorrow we would have one more meeting about it, so I was stuck going to Sugoiko once again, even though they should be coming to us. The next day, my other colleagues said that they would happily go in my place, but I didn't want to run away from a stage that I had already stepped foot in, so I told them that I wanted them to let me handle it until the end. The CEO said to me, Miss Page, the future of this company is on your shoulders, and I felt a lot of pressure. When I arrived at Sugoiko, Williams came to the entrance to greet me along with someone who looked like that might be his manager. Mrs. Page! My, my, I'm terribly sorry for my choice of words that invited any misunderstanding. I do sincerely apologize. What? Before I had time to be shocked, Williams got down on his knees at the spot and took on the full pose of an apology. H hey! At this point you're making it seem like I'm the bad guy. There were a lot of people in the lobby, and we were the center of attention. Please, will you forgive me? Hey, hey! You didn't need to take it that far with the subcontractor. Excuse me? What is this terrible acting? What are you saying? It doesn't matter if they're a subcontractor or a major company. If I said something that could cause any misunderstanding, then of course I should be asking for forgiveness. It's my motto, to always apologize if I do something wrong. Amazing you can say that. Plus, you keep saying misunderstanding even though you were taking an entirely, obviously rude attitude. In front of his bosses, he's a good boy, but beneath it, he's an all good for nothing. He's way too two-faced. This guy, he's serious by nature, and sometimes he can be easily misunderstood. Will you please give him another chance? What? Definitely not. That's what I thought, but there were people all around us already. And it already looked like I was the bad guy, so give me a break. Please, will you please forgive me, Miss Page? All right, let's probably talk about the work in front of us one more time, and then we can see. Sure, thank you very much. 
I couldn't handle all the glares from around me, and I unfortunately gave him another chance. When I walked into the meeting room, it looked like Mr. Harrison was cleaning up. Oh, Miss Harris, you'll be using this computer, right? Yeah, I brought my own today, though, so don't worry. Oh, but I already brought up all of our business history between your company and ours, so please, feel free to use it for our friends. What? Th thank you very much. What is this? It would be one thing for him to hand it to Williams, but why to me? Well then, if you'll excuse me. Uh, please don't leave me alone with this guy. Oh, if you're bored, then bring some tea. Oh, and there he is, the Williams underneath. Yes, I'll go buy some. I can't stand to watch Mr. Harrison answer to this guy. Hmm? No, wrong! Sheesh, you really don't get it. Whenever I come into the meeting room, I already told you before to prepare the highest grade of tea from Japan, didn't I? That's the least that you can do for me, to pour me the best luxury tea. If you want to drink the tea that badly, then I'll give you the tea I just bought over the convenience store earlier. That's enough for you. Mr. Harrison, you can leave. Well then, if you'll excuse me. In exchange for my precious hydration, I freed Mr. Harrison. As a result, I was left alone with Williams. After Williams snickered, he slammed down on the chair with a terrible attitude. Then he put his feet up on the desk. He started talking to me as if he was trying to pressure me. There's no point trying to put me in any trap. As you can see, my managers totally trust me from every angle. This guy, he's way too much of a second face. Um, well, then before we get to the deadline, I would like to round up the conversation about the cost. And so I opened the computer that Mr. Harrison had prepared for me to get into work. Huh? You need to do it exactly as I wrote in the contract. You're just a temporary employee of the subcontractor. And you're still trying to go against me? Uh, I'm sorry, but with the current proposal, it would put too much strain on our employees, and also I believe I was called here today to adjust that proposal. Excuse me? You're just a temp and a subcontractor. You better not talk back to Sir Williams of a major company. You should just be doing exactly as I say. Excuse me? At the same time as I thought that, I couldn't believe that Williams then took the tea that I gave him and threw it all over me from the head. Whoa! What are you doing? Oh no! My hand slipped! So sorry! Just let it go! I mean, let the tea go! <laughs> now that you've gotten a taste, you better not go against me ever again! Do you understand? <sighs> Who does he think he is? This company is only alive because of me! I made the subcontractors do the work for less money, and since I'm making them keep their near impossible deadlines, I was able to save this company from bankruptcy. What about compliance? <laughs> All of my managers, every single one is useless. It really helps me, <laughs> especially because they already think that I'm the most brilliant savior. So even if a little temp from a subcontractor like you tries to blah about it, it doesn't itch or hurt. <laughs> Williams was cracking up, but then I happened to notice a certain little thing. And I thought, wait a minute, doesn't this mean that Williams' professional life is about to be over? <laughs> and now that the ace of the company is in charge of your company, everything I say goes. Oh my, oh my, he's getting carried away. I understand, but what's going to happen if your managers find out about your true nature? Huh? As if I would slip up like that. Interesting, even though we're connected to your manager online. Huh? Through the laptop, I turned it around and showed Williams all of his managers that I connected to online. By the way, they've been watching everything already, you know. What? That's right. In reality, the laptop that Mr. Harrison handed me earlier was connected online to all of Williams' managers. And everything that Williams said and done was seen by a number of his managers. Mr. Harrison had secretly tried to reveal his true nature. Good job, Mr. Harrison! On screen, the group of managers had all their faces red. What the hell is this? But then, the number of people disappeared from the screen and in the next moment, the door to the meeting room slammed open. Ah! Uh, what on earth is going on here? Well, that's... Sorry for being a useless manager, even though I defended you. No, but that was... 
Williams was being cornered by his managers and he was shaking on the spot. I'm so sorry! Once again, he was down on the ground and once again he put his head to the ground and put on another cheap act as if he was apologizing. I am terribly sorry about this. Yeah, yeah, we don't need that again. I bet you're just putting on an act again. We're taking you off. Not only from this company, but from all of the subcontractors. That's it, that's it. No, but... And we're banning you from having any contact with external parties. That's a given. But why? Your words and actions will definitely be reported to the higher-ups. Exactly. However... Huh? If that were to happen, then as your direct manager, it would mean that I have to take some responsibility. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. Dear Sugoiko, I would like to ask for you to keep this incident between us. Excuse me? I had tea poured on my head and terrible things said to me. Not only that, but I'm certain he was doing the same thing to other subcontractors as well. There's no way he should be okay to leave a guy like this. We will pay for your dry cleaning. Plus, we promise we will continue to use the products from your company, okay? No, not okay. It's because of this manager that Williams exists. <sighs> That's right. In reality, it would be fine for us to cut off Pound & Co. But I have to protect the late CEO's feelings or whatever. And I have to do business with some pathetic small little company. What did you just say? This guy, he's not showing any signs of regret. Well, it is true that other companies have already asked us to use their products instead. And there are a lot of places that are cheaper and can work faster. So there are some people that are suggesting that we stop working with Panico. If you let this incident go, then we can continue to work with you. Excuse me, are they being serious? But then all of the other managers who ran over nodded their heads and they tried to pressure me into keeping my mouth shut. What is wrong with these people? That's my limit. A company like this, we refuse to work with you. I understand. However, with this situation, we are going to move in the direction of not working with your company anymore. Hey, wait, wait. What are you saying? Do you know what's going to happen to you if you stop business with a huge company like ours? A subcontractor is part of your team to reach the goal of making a product together. And yet you don't even understand that. And you just look at us and belittle us with pressure. We can't do business with most people like that. Hey, you! You're just a temp! Are you sure you can do that? You can take responsibility for this? My CEO has told me he was going to give me full responsibility of the situation. And I can't trust a company that bands together to try and silence such a terrible act by threatening them. So we won't be doing business with you. Huh. If you're gonna tell us to the CEO, then why don't you go ahead? Ha 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 ha! Hey, Williams! Don't worry about it. <laughs> if anything, before this woman says anything to the CEO, I'm going to tell him that they threw a tantrum when we said we would discontinue the contract. I'm sure he's just going to think of it as the frustration of a lowly woman from the little subcontractor. <laughs> Excuse me? Well then, I'm gonna go right ahead to inform him. And that's the Williams I know. Williams is Williams, but this manager is also pretty, uh, that. No wonder why he's been able to climb up with that ugly face. I was shaking with anger when I went back to my office and went straight to the CEO's office to tell him what happened. After 30 years of continued business, this sad ending made the CEO simply sigh. Panico is going to struggle from now. I wonder if I did the right thing. But you know what? I would later find out that this decision wasn't wrong. One month later. In the office, only the CEO and I were left. And then the combination of Williams and Ken arrived. I can already imagine what they came here to do. This looks like it's gonna be fun! <laughs> oh my, oh my. Did you cut down quite a bit on human resource costs? Hello, Panico. Aren't you struggling after you cut your contract with us? <laughs> oh, as usual, the most disgraceful guy. Our business with Sagoiko was over 70%, so this one month was a struggle, wasn't it, sir? Hmm. To be honest, I didn't think that things would end up like this. After losing business with Sugoiko, Panico had been facing a difficult decision. I had imagined it, but I didn't think it would be this much. I bet it has been. If you're going to say that you apologize for what happened, then we would be happy to rethink the cancelled contract for you. Miss Page, what shall we do? 
What? As if. Definitely not. I would never want to. What? But you're struggling, aren't you? To apologize for pouring tea on you, we're telling you that we'll cancel canceling your contract for you. Hey, Williams! The strategy was to go with a low profile! Oh, oops. My bad. Well then, it seems that these two from the major company seem to have little misunderstanding. So why don't I tell them the truth? <laughs> I did imagine that things were going to be difficult, but it was honestly worse than I expected. Like I said, we will help you. It's been difficult, so difficult. But we've gotten so many orders from so many different companies. Until now, we had prioritized your company with accepting orders. So there were places that we had denied. But now we decided to take them all. And now our phones won't stop ringing every single day. My goodness, we're so busy that it's so difficult. <laughs> That's right. Now that Panico has entered their contract with Sugoiko, we've received multiple of calls of multiple companies wanting to contract with us. But... but I told you that we would give you a large amount of work, didn't I? Hey, Williams, stop running that big mouth of yours. Why can't you just be honest and say that you need the products from Panico for your business? Because even if you try to work with some other company whose motto is cheaper and faster, they must be riddled with damaged goods or missing their deadlines. It must be continuous trouble. And so you must be facing a difficult time, aren't you? And so you were told by your manager to come with your head down and ask us to undo the cancelled contract, were you? And yet you came over here trying to make it seem like you're going to be saving us. That's hilarious! No way. There's obviously no way that's the case. We have plenty of other subcontractors. Well, then go ahead. And go to those plenty of others because we already have so many other partners that were super busy. And so the phones kept ringing. Oh, I'll get that. Oh, so difficult. It, this is a joke, right? By the way, all our other employees are busy right now doing evaluations on all the companies that they say they want to work with us. No way. And so they're all currently have meetings off-site, having meetings with new clients. This has to be a joke! Williams! I told you that it would be better if we went in with a low profile! If we can't save this contract with Pettico, it's over for us! Oh my, I knew it. In that case, you should have just said that from the beginning. What? If, if we apologize, then you're going to forgive us? As Williams said that, he got down on his knees and did the apology that he's so good at. We're terribly, terribly sorry for this incident. We would really love for you to lend us your products. And please save Sugoiko from bankruptcy. And then Ken got down on the floor and did the exact same thing. I'm terribly sorry about my subordinate this time. Please, continue your contract with our company. Wow, what a cheap apology. There, the CEO came back after finishing the phone call. And then Ken and Williams came crawling over to him and grabbed onto his ankles. Sir... Please, we're begging you. Please renew the contract with our company. Please save our company. Hmm. To cut off the contract of over 30 years felt like betraying a friend that had passed away, and it was too painful. Well then, that means you're going to cancel the canceled contract, right? I don't want to betray my friend, and that's why I will never do business with your company ever again. What? Nice! Well said, CEO! The first generation CEO was very serious about his work. That's why I prioritized Sugoiko over anybody else. And yet, when it comes to the current Sugoiko, you look down on your subcontractors, and you don't even know a good product from a bad one. And you just do whatever you want. Not only that, but what's wrong with your company is that the new CEO isn't even here for this important conversation. You have no sincerity at all. No sincerity. And there is no way that we would be able to let a company that is so insincere use our products that our employees have put their blood, sweat, and tears into making. That's my CEO, yo! Best in the country! But... no! Wait, wait, please! At this rate, Sugoiko is going to be cornered into bankruptcy! None of my business. Mrs. Page! None of my business. But no! <laughs> the two of them were throwing a tantrum, but when we told them that we would call the police, they dragged their feet out the door. After that, of course, Sugoiko's reputation fell straight down. Not long after they went bankrupt, Williams and Ken included. All of the employees who were responsible for the cancelled contract with Panico were ultimately sued for the cost of damages. 
The footage of Williams pouring tea on me was recorded, so I sued him for assault. And Mr. Harrison, who also helped me sue him for slander. And it looks like Williams' life is over. It turned out that Ken was also doing all kinds of shady things, and those were exposed, and now he's being sued from all angles, and he's riddled in debt. On the other hand, Panico was able to secure contracts with all kinds of brilliant companies, and in an instant, everything was a huge success. However, we're only adding a few new employees, and everybody's working hard on the new clients. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, Harrison! Great work again today. My goodness, I can't believe that somebody as brilliant and serious as you was at a company like that. No, no, please. Actually, after that I introduced Mr. Harrison to our CEO, and now he's working hard at Panico. I'm very happy that I get to work with you like this, Miss Page. What? Oh, actually, today's gonna be my last day here. What? But, but why? It's the end of her temporary contract period. What? But how can you let go of such a brilliant person? Hey, I'm not being let go, I'm just being sent to my next temporary contract. What? Mrs. Page is actually a specialized temp who infiltrates companies with unstable businesses as a contract employee so that she can investigate what the main causes are and improve them from the inside. She's a brilliant consultant. What? So does that mean... We were able to cut off ties with the burden, thank goodness. And so my job here is done. I had no idea. There are a lot of companies out there that have problems. So let's both continue working hard for good businesses. Well then, I wonder what kind of business I'm going to be transferred to next. <laughs> Thank you for watching! What kind of crazy people will we get to see next? Stay tuned for more! <laughs>